before we get too deep into the technical aspects of Linux, let's discuss a little bit about where it came from, uh, how it was founded, and um, how it became so popular. So back in the 1980s, a gentleman named Richard Stallman, with the help of the Freedom Software Foundation, began work on a free version of the Unix operating system. They called it GNU. So Unix used to be a proprietary operating system like Windows or Mac OS. So when you used it, you couldn't include it in your projects that you would use for sale without a license. Couldn't just freely use it. You had to pay for a license, etc. So they built a bunch of utilities for GNU and tried to put a lot of work into it, but GNU never really took off. Eventually, these utilities were merged into the Linux kernel, and that became the foundation of GNU Linux, which we use today. But how did Linux come about? So fast forward a few years to the 1990s, and a kid in college named Linus Torvalds began making his own version of a free uh, Unix operating system. So it was separate from GNU, but he used some of the ideas from GNU and he kind of did things his way and made his own operating system. There was no graphic interface, it was all just command line. Eventually he sent it out on his bulletin boards or mail boards and just kind of like an early version of Reddit mixed with email. And he got some support and people liked it and eventually it got coined Linux, which is a mix of his first name and Unix. So four more years later and a 1994 version 1.0 of the Linux kernel was released. Obviously the kernel by itself didn't really do much. So some of these GNU tools were stacked on top and a new license was sort of created for this freeware, this open source software that made sure people wouldn't turn it into a proprietary code. So that's sort of the history of Linux in a nutshell. There's plenty of history you can read up on on Wikipedia and just a lot of interesting facts of just why things were certain done a certain way. If you look in the Linux kernel today or just in Linux operating systems, you can see a lot of the old way things used to be done and they're still being done that way today just for historical reasons. So while we're talking about old crusty Linux stuff, we have to look at the Linux file system, which still has a lot of the old original folder structures and names of the original versions of the operating system. So as we can see here, the Linux file system begins at the top, the root directory. And in our diagram, it's the, that leftmost pink pill. And then we have a bunch of directories under that root directory. So the, the root directory here contains all of the main files and directories for the operating system. Something to note here, though, is that devices are also located here. So Linux kind of is different than Windows in the sense that Windows kind of treats everything like an object. Linux treats everything like a file. So there are files under the dev folder. In this diagram, you can see the hardware devices under root dev, where you will find hardware devices and they will appear to be files and you can read and write to them. But that's sort of a feature of Linux that you can treat devices like files. This definitely comes in handy when you're writing software so that you can talk to devices like a hard drive just like you talk to a network card and you can send information just like you're writing to a file on disk. We also find directories like Etsy and VAR which contain operating system and application configurations as well as logs and events. So the Etsy directory you can kind of think of it from the Windows side like the Windows System 32 directory, which has all the kind of main components of the operating system, the services and the files and applications that aren't really touched by normal users. They're for like admins. And then you have the var directory, which contains logs, but also it could be the directory where web files are served from when you use Linux as your web server. There are a lot of directories that we're not going to delve into here. And as you can see, directories like Etsy and user and var go even further down and home directories get created when a new user gets created on a Linux system, etc. So I encourage you definitely to read up a, a little bit more about what these directories are, 
what they're used for. The biggest thing about Linux is that you could really use any of these directories for anything you wanted to. That's kind of the point of it being open source. You can take it whatever way you want to. A lot of different distros, uh, Linux versions, if you will, will use different directories for different things. So it does get kind of confusing, but generally when you get into using Linux and you use it often enough, you sort of know where everything will generally be. You'll form your own preferences for where you want to put things if you install your own applications and things like that. So let's take a, a look at the snapshot of the Linux OS kernel. And really, let's just compare it to Windows. So as we can see in this diagram here, we have an IO subsystem, which is composed of mainly the, the building blocks of the kernel itself. And then you have two things off to the right here, the memory management subsystem and the process management subsystem. At the top of our diagram, we see the Linux kernel SCI or the system call interface. This is how the user land applications and components talk to the kernel and vice versa. And then at the bottom, we see the IRQs and the dispatcher, which is how the kernel talks to hardware components. So the bottom would be the motherboard and hardware and the top is going to be talking to the user land and applications and things like that. As you can see, it's it's definitely a simplified version of the Windows kernel, but it definitely has a lot in common. There's a lot of the same just basic operating system features that you need to deal with, like memory, creating processes and managing threads, having network interfaces and managing the network stack itself and things like that. So there's nothing really that should be too surprising in here. This is what most OSs look like. This is just a definitely more simple picture than what the Windows one looks like.